Welcome back to the series of videos on how to make mini coracles. This time we'll be making a frame and uh, hopefully by the end of it you'll have a structure that you can skin and make into a coracle. These bits here have been in soaking for a while now so hopefully that will make them bendy without breaking. You don't need to worry too much. Uh, Test the pieces of wood that you've managed to find and, uh, well, yeah, get a feel for them. You'll be able to work out using your fingers, maybe more than your eyes, when you're bending them too far. And, unlike your own ribs, if these break, then you can always just go and get some more bits of stick and make them again. The next task once you've drilled all the holes, is to put the ribs in, uh, and you can put one rib in each hole, and when they bend, they'll meet up. So, for example, the rib that is well, most like the keel rib can go in here. If it's not quite right for your hole, then remember, if you've not been taught how to use a knife, Find someone who can and get them to teach you because then that means you'll be able to do it and you won't bother them in the future. Although it's always best to bother someone rather than to slice your finger off. So that can go in there. And then when we're making the boat to its final part, you'll be able to bend these in pairs. So, because it's going to work like that, always remember to put the thick end in the ground or in the hole in your board. And make sure it's good and tight because it's going to be bent over a bit. And I think it's time for another montage. You might notice that some of the rods are uh, shorter than the others. That's because the long ones at the ends are going to bend the whole way from bow to stern, front to the back, and the short ones, they only need to bend across. Once you've got bit stuck in upright in every slot going around the whole way. The next stage is to weave, almost like a basket. And you do this by going in and out. And can you see how by having this rod in here, it's holding the skinny one in place already. So we are in and out. Well, look, I've run out of bit of stick. So what you can do is take another piece of stick and going thin end to thin end, and thick end to thick end. You can just carry on. Weaving around. Always make sure you overlap a couple of sticks.
weave it in to higher levels. And then push it down. The nicer the materials you are when you're doing this, the easier it is to do. I'm going to carry on doing that, going round and round until I've got a good solid base. But um, if I just went round and round going in and out of all of the same ones, then they would fall apart. So uh, this piece I'm going to put in here, I'm starting off on the opposite side of the uprights. So we weave it right in and make a support structure for the cover. Don't want to do it too tightly because there's going to be another really cool stage that happens after the montage. It's not a montage anymore, is it? It's a hyperlapse. So in a moment, I'm going to bend time and space and take you to the one I've already done. So, that's the weaving done. Do you remember I said about not making it too tight? That's because these shorter ones here are going to be bent over to match up with the ones on the other side. Now, how much you bend them over will shape the depth of your bolt. Don't worry if they're too short though, because you can either bend them over so that they fit in and go down a long way like so, or you can bend them over so that they meet the other side. You don't need to go back into the weave, and then they can be lashed. Get a string if you're doing that, or with the appliance of modern technology, is sticky tape. Keep using masking tape, especially at this stage, because what you're doing just now is working out the shape of your bolt. principle of bending the, the side ribs across and if you have them taped over in two places that means it will match nicely but just as the base of this was measured out uh, measuring is also possible for the end here. Have you ever wondered why symmetrical things look right or pretty? Probably because a lot of things will work, even if they don't look particularly nice. But quite often, if you've got symmetrical things, they work better. Like if you've got an, a boat which is all lumpy, it might not sail straight. But a boat which is symmetrical might pass smoothly through the waves in a straight line. One of the ways you can help this style boat though is the long ones you've got to bend a little bit more, just gently bring them round here at the bow or the stern. 
these long ones will give you a guideline that runs the whole way from bow to stern. Then they match up. If you bend it down, then it's going to go to there. Remember, if you're using a knife, then you might be safe with it, but if your wee brother or sister is around and might run along and catch it when you're not looking, then you need to think about that as well. So always keep it safe. All these shoots that I'm cutting off, if you collect them up, then you could put them into a biscuit tin, or if anyone has them around anymore, tobacco tins, uh, or even a big bean tin will work. And you can use that at a fire to make the stick turn into charcoal. charcoal. So you can make your own stick to charcoal. How cool is that? So this looks like it's time for another montage. Can we play with space and time and make all of this suddenly become a boat? Haha! <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Um, so, one of the things I've been doing is, as I've been bending the strips over, I've been trimming them down so that they fit in ah, or snap, depending. Um, and I've been using tape to secure the individual bits of wood to each other. Now, if you were doing this as a proper cutter, old style, and you might want to do some of these techniques to make yours nicer, then once you've woven the frame in the ground, you could put a plank and some heavy weights on here, and that would push the bottom of the boat down and bend the ribs so that it gives you a flat bottom to your cutter. Flat bottom is really useful because it was a round bottom and it makes it really tippy. It's got a flat bottom, it makes it more stable. Um, however, that's pretty much the basket frame made. Let's see how you can pass skin on. 